Good morning. My name is Maxim and I'm from Russia. Uh, we have a lot of factory in Russia and now most of them need Wi-Fi for some reason. Uh, I will share some information about uh, my experience uh, in one of the biggest uh, steel factory in Russia. And I will tell you why they need Wi-Fi and how it works. Mm, Wi-Fi in the factory, it's hard and easy at the same time. It's hard because of uh, conditions. Uh, because uh, steel reflect radio waves, as you know. It's a lot of steel there. And it's easy because uh, they have really limited amount of client. On my project, uh, they have uh, only four types of client. Mm. Uh, about this project. Uh, uh, the factory warehouse is uh, different than the usual warehouse. Mm. It's about uh, mm, 3,000 big steel rolls there. Each, each roll size like this it, and weight 20 tons. So it's huge. And uh, in other warehouses, maybe some big packs of steel sheets. And uh, mm, I will show you a short video to feel the atmosphere on the factory. This guy really helped me to speak about uh, his job because now his job is uh, became much easier. Before this project, uh, he had to walk between these hot rows. Some of these rows were uh, with temperature about uh, 400 degrees C. And now he can just uh, find the batch he needs on the tablet. Okay. So, so what he is see on his tablet. Uh, this uh, project called 3D Warehouse. Uh, and now uh, we know where each roll stands in real time. So the uh, crane equipped with uh, some sensors uh, Magnetical sensors, optical sensors, and the electromagnetical to find position of current roll. And um, we use Wi-Fi to transfer uh, information about the fraud to the server and then back for, from the server uh, to the client, to tablets, and to, uh, to the client uh, for crane operator. Okay. Mm. My story begins when uh, one of my friends asked me to help. Uh, I came to the warehouse and uh, the Wi-Fi was already built by other company. And mm, I saw that uh, access point was uh, at uh, 16 meters height. They use Omni antennas and uh, Mm. <laughs> on the crane, they install access point in client mode and uh, with antenna, it's uh, about same height. And the cranes work well enough, but uh, the tablets uh, works not well. And when I saw it the first time, I, feel, I, I thought, Oh my God, it's full of metal. It's high reflective, really. <laughs> mm. Mm. I performed a survey and found that it's 7 AP and both 2.4 and 5 was enabled and in use. 
I don't know why. And uh, it was uh, uh, with the five gig, it was okay with the signal range, but they used only four channels. And when I look at the 2.4, I found something strange for me. Uh, it looks like uh, no access point in this area. Uh, then I start packet capture and uh, uh, found uh, that uh, a lot of beacons on 2.4 have a C flag. That means that uh, beacon is corrupted. So if uh, uh, Ekahau can't receive beacon, it uh, not show you. And um, something about the people who work there. Uh, um, crane operators uh, works um, 12 hours shift and uh, most of them women. So can you imagine your wife working in such a nice place? <laughs> That's why I was really happy to help them to automate. Uh, it was um, uh, Wi-Fi on the warehouse is really different for me. It's not uh, for making Wi-Fi for some maybe managers to chatting to each other. That's uh, is uh, it's uh, factory really need Wi-Fi to autom to automate and help the people work in better conditions. And um, I already told about this guy who uh, before this project walk between hot rolls to find and now uh, he don't need it. It's rolls not so hot. They, but it's really hot in uh, winter time. You can, uh, if you freeze, you can just get uh, near the floor, and it's uh, <laughs> really warm. <laughs> uh, about the future, uh, just a few weeks after WLPC, I came. I, I will come to the factory again, and we start. Uh, uh, the first crane robot there, which use Wi-Fi for connecting. And uh, next project for the next year, we're thinking about uh, remote cranes. So Wi-Fi have to be really stable in this challenging environment. Um, uh, how to uh, how can we overcome this? heavy condition, uh, at least we have to use appropriate industrial grade hardware uh, and uh, install this hardware in the way that we can get uh, as less uh, reflection as possible. So as I found, it, it's better to put access points uh, on the pillars and uh, uh, not on the pillars, but uh, on some tubes. And uh, we can use um, directional or semi-directional antennas. Um, soon I will tell you a little bit about this. And uh, in some cases we can put an, uh, access points or antennas uh, on pillars. Uh, maybe because of these big ovens, and uh, we need Wi-Fi right there. And the only option is to put it on a uh, you know, lighting gantry. Uh, and of course, you have to survey before do it. And uh, I call it uh, Russian-style AP on a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so engineers have to be really serious. <laughs> AP under stick. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the crates? 
Uh, as my opinion, it's better to put access point in client mode under the cabin. So we can get really good signal level and direct line of sight. But uh, mm, some inst uh, and put it uh, about one about half meter below. And uh, some of installers decide to put it uh, one and a half meter below. And uh, after about three months, what happens? Uh, we don't know what happens exactly, but uh, we found um, four antennas uh, lying at the floor under the crane. And we suppose it, uh, was, it happened because of a uh, high vibration level. Uh, so uh, thank you to the Cisco SmartNet. Uh, they just uh, um, replaced this access point in a few days. <laughs> um, and one good way to overcome overcome vibration is to use uh, industrial Ethernet connectors. Uh, how many of you knows what is M12 connector? No, not too much. Mm. It's, uh, uh, you can easy to buy a uh, usual RJ45 connector in any shop, but uh, if you forget uh, to buy M12, and you have to set up uh, your lab immediately. You can just uh, take a simple CAT6 cable and uh, connect it, but never do it on production. <laughs> mm, then about antennas. I found that uh, uh, internal directional or semi-directional antenna is much better because it's cheaper and if you find a radiation pattern appropriate for your facility, better to use them. And uh, details, technical details. Before implement, uh, I decide to test uh, how it works on lab, and uh, I put the access point and client access point just in front of each other, and uh, um, make some throughput test. And in lab conditions, I found that uh, we can get speed up to 100 meg, <coughs> maybe 70 meg with no UDP loss and no retry. It's uh, about 1% of retry. So I uh, repeat this experiment uh, 10 times and found that the retry rate no more than 1% about it in lab conditions. But when I ask the engineer who helps me to take uh, the client access point and just uh, walk with this uh, like a crane moving, uh, we found that uh, rate rate enhanced up to 80%. I checked this with Omnipeak and found the same. Mm. Then we install access point on the warehouse. Here is the access point and here is the crane client. And we, first of all, I test uh, throughput when the crane is not moving. And uh, I found that we can reliably get only speed about 20 megs per second with no loss and uh, rate no more than 16%. Then I asked the crane operator to move the crane and check uh, 
and 10 times check uh, the loss and retry rate uh, uh, and um, uh, there is what was not no loss no UDP loss but uh, retry rate is up to 50 percent can we get better I think no in these conditions um, uh, so this is my findings uh, um, if we need to connect uh, cranes with a HD camera on each, uh, it's about 5 meg speed. Uh, uh, how many cranes we can uh, put to one access point? It's uh, about three. Four is too much. And about tools I use at this project. You know most of them. Uh, uh, WLANP is really useful. And uh, mm, usual tripod, uh, like a Wi Fi stand, will not help you. You need uh, plastic tubes. It's, uh, you can get it in any plumbing shop. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, mm, also useful tool is uh, 3D camera because uh, sometimes you have to remember uh, how this uh, warehouse looks uh, about uh, half a year ago and uh, you can see the picture <laughs> and remember. And <laughs> also when uh, I first start this project uh, I use my old laptop and uh, uh, now it's much better with the Sidekick and iPad. Mm. What next? Uh, of course you have to survey before and after and you have to do passive survey and active survey. Uh, and. Uh, you have to create offset for each of your devices because mm, I think you know this, uh, all devices uh, have really different sensitivity. So this is how uh, Casio handheld device here, this network. This is how uh, Panasonic TuffPad tablet here, same network. And this is how uh, a P in client mode on the crane here, this network. So it's really different, but uh, we are lucky that we can tune our roaming uh, algorithm on the crane access point. I will tell about it a little bit. Uh, it's very useful to have uh, not only spectrum analyzer in inside your site peak or maybe MetaGeek, but it's really useful to have a spectrum analyzer inside access point. Mm. Mm. And uh, OmniPeak is really good for checking roaming because uh, it's not easy to tune uh, roaming in such conditions. And uh, mm, what I want to say is that, of course, uh, this is chocolate. <laughs> you need a lot of this. <laughs> mm. About the spectrum, mm. on the pre-deployment survey, you can find that uh, uh, something used all of your Uni3 channels. And uh, after some investigation, you can find these guys on the pillars. This is a CMEO positioning system. They use it uh, in the first warehouse. And uh, it eats five of your available channels. That's really bad. And in next warehouse, they implement uh, magnetic system. 
Spectrum analysis is really useful uh, after implementation because uh, uh, you can find uh, radars in your factory. Uh, this factory is about 30 kilometers from the nearest airport, but once we found uh, uh, that uh, two of uh, access points change uh, statically a signal channel. And we found in log, uh, in controller log uh, event, that we have a radar. And uh, I convert uh, some of the APs to SE connect mode and found these nice stripes. It's something continuously transmitting. And, uh, uh, the receiving level of this uh, signal was about uh, minus 85 dB. And after about one and a half hour, I found uh, <coughs> this guy. This is a broken uh, motion sensor, which was inside a small brick building inside big warehouse. And uh, this broken sensor uh, changed the channel on two access points that was uh, 100 meters from this sensor. Mm. Uh, on the next warehouse, I try uh, when I just set up Wi-Fi network, I found that my smartphone can successfully connect and uh, do a throughput test and it works okay. But uh, no, none of the access points in client mode on crane can connect. I tried to investigate why and found that uh, every two seconds uh, access, client access points roams. And mm, the rate rate was really high. And uh, uh, how I fix it? Uh, I found that uh, um, we have a really high rate rate on MCS with uh, 64 QM and 256 QM. Uh, the signal strength was really great. It's about minus 55 dB both sides. And the driver decided that we can work on 64 km, but uh, for some reasons it can't. And we can do nothing with driver. Uh, so I switch off 64 km rate and all of crane axis AP is connected uh, immediately. And also it's useful to have common line interface for checking some parameters like retry rate and when the, when the client access points roams and uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, oh. All of you know that is something not working, it's Wi-Fi. Uh, last time uh, they called me uh, and tell uh, there is no electricity on one crane. Maxim, can you check Wi-Fi? <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> and you have tools to prove that it's not your Wi-Fi fault. And, uh, uh, First of all, you need, you, you, if you don't have detailed network diagram, you can't understand what happens. Because the Wi-Fi is only this part. This part is wired. And you have to know how the traffic, the way of the traffic. And you can use some window tools like Cisco Prime but uh, you can trust it because prime is averages data so 
on this picture you can see that roaming uh, happens six times but uh, in reality it uh, happens about 20 times where uh, and you have to check a uh, log file at the client mode access point uh, so sometimes prime show that uh, signal trench is SNR is really low but uh, you cannot believe that uh, the useful tool that I found is a simple PRTG you know and uh, mm, uh, once uh, the guy from the factory called me and told that uh, there is uh, no connection with one of the cranes I checked the Wi-Fi site and uh, it was perfect uh, the client access points where group each was connected and uh, no problems with it but uh, I investigate these uh, red stripes uh, means uh, the wired switch behind uh, the work group bridge uh, uh, there is a problem in uh, cable between switch and access point and I ask guys uh, to check this line and uh, squeeze it again and they do it and then it was perfect uh, okay um, a few details about roaming on the bridge <laughs> um, workgroup bridge is device for connecting uh, a couple of wired devices wirelessly uh, as my example is uh, Cisco workgroup bridge it can connect up to eight devices uh, you can use other devices like Siemens it can do the same mm. the greatest thing in the world group bridge that you can tune the roaming algorithm and you can uh, set up the three shows that you need and that's uh, really fun to write on the crane to find uh, when the crane access point drums mm. and something about PCF mm. as you know usually we use DCF and all the clients make their, their own decisions like an Indian drivers <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes traffic jams happen and uh, if you have a traffic jam I don't know about uh, the Europe in Russia sometimes the policemen stand on the road and uh, rule the traffic and it helps that is PCF <laughs> and first function, yeah. yes uh, a few years ago I, I read the great book CWNA and I found that is, uh, mm, this method was never adopted by VLAN vendors this is not true some vendors adopted this and uh, uh, at least Siemens maybe you know and uh, they have a proprietary like polling algorithm and uh, if we need really really fast and predictable roaming <coughs> we can use this hardware and achieve roaming time but not more than 128 milliseconds and in, in some cases uh, 33 milliseconds roaming time available uh, they use really old hardware really old chipsets but it works really stable mm. and but this protocol this protocol is uh, really chatty so uh, it used about 40 percent of uh, airtime just for coordinating so the, uh, there is no information transferred there it just uh, talking you next you next you next you next 
So that is my findings about PCF. If you need something, uh, does that still exist? Hmm? Do they still sell that? Yes, yeah. yes. We configure it that we use it. Wow. Really. <laughs> well, do you have packet captures on that? It, do you have PCF packet captures? Yes, I can send you. Yes, and I know Peter would like to see some yes. of those. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I will send you. I have, and uh, mm, these access points can work or in uh, usual Wi-Fi or with some additional license with IPCF mode. Mm. <laughs> so that's it for me. Uh, they don't. As as I know, the Cisco workgroup bridges uh, can't use FT. So, All right. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you.